This right here is the new Mini S. Now last year we did went ahead and take a look at the Mini Me and compared it with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. And to the most part, that older gimbal was great, but it was the application that was holding it back from being the best value gimbal last year. But is this newer one better than that one? Let's go ahead and find out. Now the Mini Me last year was the cheapest as that one used to retail for $100 while the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 still retails roughly around $100 to $150. This one on the other hand, this one retails at a new low of $79 US. That is half the cost of the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. So let's go ahead and find out what do you get if you go with the Mini S over the Osmo Mobile 2. So first, let's go ahead and talk about its specs for the new Mini S. So this gimbal is listed to have a battery life up to 8 hours, which is more than enough juice to make it through any kind of recording session. And it takes about an hour and a half to charge it back up. It's listed to support a maximum payload up to 260 grams. That is 20 grams more compared to the DJI Mobile 2. But the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 has a larger battery as that battery can last up to 15 hours under a single charge, but takes one hour longer to charge it. So out of the box, just like the Mini Me, this one also includes this little mini tripod, which is really awesome because it's so small and universal. You can use it on other camera equipment you may have that has the same thread. The little feet down here, they have grip so you can place it on any flat surface. So one of the unique aspects of things about this new Mini Me is that it's foldable. Not just that it's foldable, it actually stays locked in place. Like all the moving mechanism of the gimbal is locked in place. So it doesn't move around when you're traveling with it. You're less likely to damage this gimbal than you would like on the Osmo Mobile 2. That one requires you to carry a travel case so that one of the arms doesn't break or snap off. And then when it comes to setting up the gimbal, it's really easy as there's no need to unlock certain locking positions like other traditional gimbals normally require you to. This one, you simply just place on your phone, move it a bit, slide it until it's perfectly balanced, power it on, and you notice that the gimbal will automatically self-balance itself. It will automatically detect and know if it's on portrait mode or landscape mode. And something new to this gimbal is that this one actually has like a sleep mode. For example, when you when your phone is equipped and it's not in use, if you tap on the little red button, it will power off the gimbal, but the gimbal is still on. It's like on sleep mode. So if you move to another location or you're switching your phone from landscape mode to portrait mode, you could do that without requiring you to fully turn off the gimbal. And then once everything is set, simply tap on the power and the gimbal wakes back up. And then the grip handle has been redesigned. It's a little bit more ergonomical than it was in the past. The Mini Me had like a flat surface. This one has a traditional round surface similar to like the Mobile 2. I haven't faced any uncomfort issues when it comes to holding this thing for a long period of time. All the buttons are right here and are easy to access such as the joystick. With this allows us to move the gimbal any position that we like. The center wheel is where you find your shutter button. And then you also got some button shortcuts on this little circle wheel. The bottom one, if you double tap on it, it will enter the gimbal to be in sport mode. If you triple tap on it, it will actually launch inception mode. Now, I was a bit disappointed when I found out that this gimbal doesn't fully rotate 360 like the other gimbal did. The Mini Me was able to fully rotate to a full 360. This one doesn't. So when you activate Inception Mode, you have to go really smooth because if you go really fast, you're going to ruin your shot. So Inception Mode is a little bit tricky. It's possible, but it just requires a little more skill and practice. Now on the back, you might have noticed that this gimbal actually has a trigger button on the back, which I personally love using. To recenter it, you simply just double tap on it. And if you want to lock the pan position to follow, simply just hold and then the gimbal will follow with your motion. That's really cool. Now on the right side, we also have some additional controls. This is where we find our zoom in and zoom out functionality, which works like this. When you launch the companion app, the zoom function zooms in really smoothly. And you could actually zoom in a lot than I was expecting. So the overall design of the application, the companion app, the layouts are very clean and jam packed with a lot of shortcuts on this little screen. On the top left hand side, you can see both your battery for your phone and the gimbal. 
And then on the right side, you can actually select on the resolution you want to record at. It has all the popular resolutions to choose from, so feel free to pause the video to check the entire list. And just like any other gimbal, this also has all the popular features as well, such as tracking mode, time lapse, advanced time lapse, which is basically motion time lapse. And you also got manual settings, and you also have filters if you like those. And then the gimbal settings itself, you have full control of the zoom speed if you wish to readjust that, recalibrate the gimbal if you find out it's acting funky, and you can manually disconnect it when it's connected to your Bluetooth. And when it comes to shooting time lapse, this gimbal does a fantastic job in doing so as all those shots look fantastic. Motion time lapse look really cool. Hey, you might have noticed there's also a preview button. I respect this preview button because an issue I face with the Mobile 2, sometimes when you position your gimbal, you have everything all set up to do a motion time lapse. It will accidentally bump into like a wall or a close object you just didn't see and ruin the shot, making you start all over. But with this gimbal, it allows you to preview it so you don't have to start completely over after the gimbal bumps into something. So I appreciate them having the preview option, allowing you to see the motion before it actually does start recording. But here you have full control of the shutter intervals and the duration time limits you wish to set it. It doesn't show you the length of the clip with these settings equipped. For instance, I got used to the Osmo Mobile where it will actually give you the estimate time with the settings that you have. So for example, if I adjusted this amount, it's gonna give me a 30 second clip. This one, you don't get that information. You have to rely on your experience to know if this five minute clip is not gonna turn into a five second clip. Now, when it comes to his tracking capabilities, Moza definitely did step up their game compared to the Mini Me. The Mini Me was awful when it comes to tracking. This one has been significantly improved, but it still isn't perfect. To the first 30 or 50 seconds or so of just tracking me, for instance, it did a really great job keeping track. But there was actually quite a few times where the application would crash entirely. Or the gimbal would just lose track of me and cause it to haywire like this. But face tracking while moving, as long as you're moving in a straight motion and there isn't that many shadows or sunlight interfering, it did a great job. But again, it will still sometimes lose me. So it isn't really quite reliable just yet. And then when it comes to tracking large size objects, it does a great job again, but after like the 20 or 30 second mark, it just completely loses the target. And this could also be said when it comes to tracking large size subjects. For instance, like this pickup truck right here. We targeted it on its larger side, but as soon as we went to its narrower side, the camera had a hard time recentering it once we re went back to that same side. So although this application supports the many different resolutions, I don't think it's fully optimized to work with iPhone iOS. I noticed on my iPhone 10 when I was shooting at 4K at 60 FPS. On the viewfinder, I noticed the footage was turning out to be really choppy. Just simply moving my hand in front of the camera, you notice there's a huge latency and delay. And so to prevent this, I would just record using the standard iOS camera app on my iPhone. Because even after I was done shooting that video, the clip still ended up to be choppy. I thought that was just a viewfinder, but no, that was actually the recording footage that got choppy as well. So for best results, I would just stick with the native camera application. But after reviewing the footage that this Mini S was able to shoot, I was actually quite surprised how smooth the footage came out to be. It looks almost identical to the Osmo Mobile 2. Honestly, I can't even tell the difference if I didn't label these. Even while walking down a very steep hill, the footage still came out to be respectfully smooth and usable for video production. However, I did notice when I was recording on portrait mode, for instance, back part of the gimbal was actually being picked up by the camera. No matter how high I raised up the phone, this part of the gimbal will still show up in the footage. But when back on landscape mode, there isn't any interference issues whatsoever. A 
Although this gimbal does have the name Mini S for Mini Small, I guess. When it's folded up, it's still really large if you put it side by side to the Osmo Mobile 2. And when you unfold it, it's even taller and a little bit wider if we compare the two. But when it comes to traveling, I do like how everything locks into place on the Mini S as it's safer and you're less likely to damage it when you just throw things in your bag. Unlike the Mobile 2, with that gimbal, as soon as you store it away or put it back in the case, you have to rebalance it again in order for that gimbal to be stored away. With this one, there's no need to do that. And when it comes to charging this gimbal, this gimbal actually is using the current USB-C connection compared to the other gimbals out there in today's market, as they're still most likely using micro USB. It's good to know that this one's already on the USB-C trend. Now, something unique about this gimbal is that it actually has a micro USB port on the arm of the gimbal. It's not to charge your device. This port's there if you want to use the cable that they provide for you to connect it to your smartphone audio jack. So if you don't wish to connect it with Bluetooth, you can actually connect the two wired to each other. So I guess if you have a non-supportive device or you're just trying to preserve some battery life, I guess you could hardwire the two devices to each other for them to both communicate. Now what else is included besides the manual and the cables is this traveling pouch. They don't give us a case like the other one did. The Mini Me came with like this cool carbon fiber case, but honestly, since this thing locks into place, I don't think there's a need to really have a case for this thing. Now something that made the Mini Me special that they removed on this one, it does not wirelessly charge your phone. And although the port right here is exposed for our cell phone to charge on the go if we ever need to, but for some reason on my iPhone 10, I cannot seem to activate the recharge mode. So even though I could plug it into the USB port using the USB-C to lightning port adapter cable that I have, it doesn't charge my iPhone. I don't know if this is just an iOS thing, but I'm unable to charge it. If I figure it out, I'll comment down in the comment section and pin it and let you guys know. But so far, I was unsuccessful to charge my iPhone on the go with this thing. So that was disappointing. But still, for being a $79 gimbal, the structure, the build quality, it was very durable. The photability makes traveling with this thing really convenient. So because of that, for $80, I mean, this is a great value for a gimbal. So if all you really care about is creating epic looking time lapse, motion time lapse, taking really smooth photos, as well as taking smooth videos, this performs really well. I was actually quite surprised how similar it compares to the Osmo Mobile 2. But the Moza app still needs some improvement, so uh, just when it comes to recording, I'll rely on the iOS app than the Moza app. The Moza app still needs some improvements because the official app is less likely to crash on you. But that's going to be it for this video. If you guys found this video informative, useful, you know what to do. I'll greatly appreciate it if you could leave this video a big thumbs up as down lets me know, but that will also strongly help support the channel. And if you plan on picking up this gimbal for yourself, make sure you use our affiliate link in the video description down below. It doesn't cost you anything more. All it does is just sends a kickback to the channel, which those funds goes towards the equipment and the audio gear that you see here for the channel to improve and give you the best quality content I can. So if you can, I'll greatly appreciate it if you could use that link. But that's going to be it for this video. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.